why would we want to make our own candles? This is such an important topic and I am so passionate about this. So hear me out on my soapbox for just a quick second. Candles are mostly made from paraffin, which is not clean. It's not a clean thing to burn and breathe in. Um, loosely regulated can have contaminants in it. They usually have color added and then a lot of fragrance. And fragrance is, um, man, it's something that I wish our government protected us a little more on. There are over 4,000 chemicals that can be labeled as fragrance in the United States of America, many of which are banned in Canada and Europe. And so you're putting these chemicals out into the air. Same thing with Scentsy, any kind of warmer, anything that has a strong scent. Listen, things that smell good, they only come from two places, plants or chemicals. And so if we're using anything with artificial fragrance, we're basically like toxifying our air. Um, and so if anyone in your house has allergies, um, sneezes a lot, coughs a lot, has eczema, has trouble focusing, has hormone irregularities, this can all be coming from an overload of fragrance in our detergent, in our perfume, in our bath and beauty products, of course, in Scentsy and candles. So what I highly recommend doing instead is buying or making a beeswax candle and putting it next to your diffuser. So put some that smells super yummy in your diffuser and our diffusers light up too, so it can be candle-ish. If you just really love candles, put it next to your diffuser, you get the smell, you get the ambiance that you like um, with absolutely no chemicals. There's a few important things about beeswax I'm gonna tell you, but the other really important thing about candles is that a lot of people still, believe it or not, use a candle with a wick center, oh, sorry, use a wick with a metal center and it's usually lead. So now you have lead and chemicals all in your air. This is very, very bad. So we are going to use a 100% cotton wick in our candles. Very simple ingredients, beeswax and coconut oil. Um, now, people always ask about adding essential oils when they make their own candles and we actually don't recommend that because it takes so much essential oil for you to smell it when it's burning. It's a waste of your money. I put a whole five milliliter bottle of passion in this. I can smell it a little, but there's no way it's smelling at my room like a diffuser would, right? So it's a much better option to put the passion, just six or eight drops in your diffuser and burn the candle unscented next to it. If you wanna dump your precious doTERRA oils in there, go ahead, but don't use oils from the store or anywhere else because they can be toxic as well. Also typically synthetic. Um, okay, so that's why we're gonna make our own candles. Now let me show you how. So step one, you're going to take a beeswax, put it into something that you're okay with it melting in. It's gonna be hard to clean up, so if you have an old jar, that's better, but I didn't. Um, let's put that in there. We're gonna melt this. We're gonna get this water to boiling. Stir it occasionally. I'm gonna use a wooden skewer to stir it so that I don't ruin any of my other utensils. And then once it's fully melted, we're gonna pull it off the heat. I am using Myers Beeswax. This is a US company, 100% raised and processed in the United States. Um, it says naturally fragrant and they mean it. It smells really, really good. It has not been bleached, that's why it's yellow. This is beeswax that I got off Amazon at some point. It doesn't smell at all like the beeswax from the farmers, so. Choose what you will, but we decided to spend a little more, support the local farmers and make sure we're getting something pure and safe. So it's gonna kind of shake and make some noise. Don't worry about that um, as it starts to melt. And, and beeswax takes a lot longer to melt than say coconut oil. So you have to be patient with it. You're gonna feel like it's never ever going to melt, but I promise it will. Starting to boil and still making a lot of noise, starting to melt. See, get shiny. So we are all melted. I'm gonna turn the stove off. We're gonna pull it off the heat and we're going to add our coconut oil. All right, we added the coconut oil and it has a much, much lower melting temp. So it's going to melt quickly into this really hot beeswax. Candles take patience, that is for sure, but you can make a big batch. I'm just doing one candle today because want to keep the ratios manageable. We're gonna pour about half an inch in here. 
and it's already starting to cool. And we're going to put the wick in. That's up, you're gonna to wanna to take a skewer and push it into the bottom, you know, in the middle as much as you can. And I just used this to kind of shove it in the part that was setting up. You're gonna let this half inch of wax sit for five to 10 minutes. So it's strong enough to hold this when you pour the rest of the wax in. The next step, you can wind this around after it's cooled about five to 10 minutes, wind it around here so it stays straight, or you can just have a kid hold it for you. <laughs> we're gonna pour it in. Okay, we're gonna pour the rest. Oh no! It's hard to find good help, people. Hold it straight in the middle. And you wanna go right below the threads of the jar. Right there. And in fact, I have a little more, so we're just gonna go to the top. Okay, see it's already cooling. Cooled as it came out of my pot. So you just have to stand there for 10 minutes and hold that. You good with that? <laughs> okay, we used the skewer and secured with a piece of tape to keep it in the middle as much as possible. You can see it's already turning white on the outside as it cools. Can't wait to see the finished product and it smells amazing. So it's looking really, really good. We trimmed the wick and it smells amazing and we can't wait for it to get all dried up so we can burn it. Mm -hmm.